All right, it's Super Bowl Sunday, but I'm way more interested in talking speed skating. Let's do a podcast. All right, so um, I think people that watch this channel know that I, I really like finding the skaters that are from European countries that aren't necessarily like Norway or the Netherlands. Um, and today we've got a, a guy from a, a hotbed of speed skating history um, all the way from Estonia via Calgary. Let's welcome Martin Leave. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So do you have big plans for the Super Bowl? No, not really. Right. Me neither. All right. It's perfect. We can talk all day then. So you're sitting in Calgary right now. Um, getting ready for world single distance and a couple weeks later then we've got the the world all around world sprint um, as we're sitting here right this second how are you feeling I'm feeling good when I arrived here on uh, Tuesday then I was a little bit tired because I had uh, quite a lot of traveling like past two weeks because I stayed in uh, Salt Lake almost like two weeks and then we traveled to Quebec which was almost like a whole trade traveling because we had a work up over there and then after Quebec we traveled to Calgary and this also took a lot of energy and uh, when I arrived here then I was quite tired like two three days and now I'm more recovered and yeah the shape is also getting better awesome well you got a few more days on the ice to get it together and um, and get ready to go after some uh, podiums there at Worlds so um, quite often on this channel, I guess it's becoming predictable at this point, but um, I, you know, it's, it's about the skaters and their stories. And we always want to hear about how you found the sport, especially, you know, as I mentioned in jest, you know, there, there's, there's not a tremendous amount of um, speed skating with Estonia. So how did you find the sport? Take us through those early years. So actually there is uh, two reasons. Uh, one of the reasons because I have an older brother and uh, the second thing is the location where I born because we only had um, one spot back in days when I started speed, speed skating to do speed skating. So uh, I was born in like a really small village and uh, my first coach started just uh, doing speed skating uh, trainings and because I have an older brother, he went there first and uh, I was looking uh, looking up to him and then yeah I just one day tried tried speed skating and I really liked it I was pretty young I think I was like seven eight years old and yeah I just uh, I remember my first training I was more more on the ice than than <laughs> actually skating because it was so difficult and also I was skating quite a lot with hockey skates and I had a really like nice and uh, good feeling about that and then I just wanted to try speed skate, speed skating, and uh, this was so difficult. Yeah, well, that's that's an understatement. So, um, wh where you were born and, and where you grew up was was hockey something that was pretty popular? Uh, actually, no. We just had a like two hundred fifty meter uh, ice track in close close to my uh, village, and uh, like we back in days, we had like really nice winter. We had a lot of snow. It was quite cold, and uh, my first coach always made ice there on the 250 meter track, and uh, and I just like to to do skating, and uh, and then yeah, then I just started with hockey skates, and then moved to speed skating. Yeah, so the transition from hockey skates to a long blade is, I th I think you know I spent my whole life on hockey skates and. It was horrifying to put speed skates on. I mean, I, you know, after two laps, I'm like, I, I can't do this sport. And <laughs> I had to sit down and have a talk with myself. But um, let's take a look at this image quick. So what track is this? Yeah, that's my home track. It's uh, it's, it's like the village name is Adavara. And uh, this is like from my parents' house. It's like four kilometers away. So I grew up on, on skating on that track, actually. So that's a 250 meter track. Yes, and there is like asphalt uh, underneath, so there is no uh, no cooling system or something like this. So there is only ice when it's cold in Estonia. <laughs> so how how do you do a time trial on a 250 meter track? 
Well, it's it's quite complicated because the corners are pretty pretty tight, and uh, I still remember some of my like last races over there because I was already pretty fast, and it was actually for me was pretty impossible to skate the inner corners because it was so so tight. <laughs> well, you should be a mass start specialist now. Uh, mass start is too long for me. <laughs> Well, we're going to get to some of that stuff later because, uh, you know, I, I think the world knows you as a badass sprinter. But when we root around in your history, there's there's some interesting things. So usually when I do my research for, for guys like you, I spend a lot of my time on speedskatingresults.com, which is an awesome um, resource of, of information in history. Um, so I like to pull up you know, your history and, and near as I can tell your first time trial, at least the first recorded one was on March 1st, 2008, which would have made you about 12 or 13 years old. I think it was in Helsinki, uh, Finland, and you did a 55, 13. Um, do you remember that one? Actually, I don't, I just re remember that, uh, we went pretty often to Finland because uh, that was the closest uh, ice track to us. So normally we went there like almost every every Friday after after school. Sometimes we had to leave from school also just the uh, last lessons to uh, to approach to the boat and then by boat it's like two hours or something and then we are in Finland. Wow. And we went there almost like uh, every weekend on Friday and came came back on Sunday. That is and, a commitment. And then sometimes we skated like three times per day because we just wanted to use the ice as much as possible. Wow, that's incredible. So yeah, what what I what I noticed is that you had a you had a time trial in Finland, you had one in Germany, you had another one in Finland before you ever recorded anything in Estonia. But that track that we showed before um, at Atavera, um, you've got a lot of a lot of history on that track even though it's 250 meters do you, do you think skating on on a 250 meter track has shaped you in any way well i think when you're younger then it's better actually because uh the corner is tighter so it's easier to skate because then you don't have so much speed but uh when you're getting like faster and you have more speed then you have trouble there but I think for kids it's it's actually better than the 400 meter because when you have less speed then the 400 meter corners are too too wide and sometimes you cannot do crossover and you don't have perfect lean for the for the corner. Yeah. And I think for a 250 meter track it's it's perfect for kids who doesn't have like a lot of speed they just can can still maintain the corner pretty well. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, so when when you think back to those early years and you're starting to kind of figure the sport out um you had mentioned a coach there that you worked with um how did you advance from you know going to finland on fridays and you know just a, a few years later you started doing junior world cups and you did a lot of junior world cups so how did you make that advancement from being this recreational skating kid into somebody that was, you know, starting to compete globally? Well, I think we had like a really nice group also. And uh, I was always looking forward to go to training camps with, with this group. And we had like, uh, yeah, we had a great coach also. So I think that was that was one thing what, what like kept me motivated and uh, reached reach my like goals. Although when I was younger, I didn't have so many goals than than I have now, but uh, but I think it was the the group what we had. Where did you go train? Uh, was it primarily again just heading up to Finland, or did you have other places that you guys would go? Uh, so normally, like when we started, then we went almost every weekend like to Finland to train, and later on, I don't I'm not sure when they made ice in uh, Minsk in uh, Belarus, so we went there later on so because it was uh, like an inner door and it was uh i would just say better conditions than in <laughs> finland because finland is outdoor and it's not so fast ice and i still yeah. remember we had quite a lot of um like icu development camps in uh, minsk so that was also one reason why we why we choose um, to go to minsk and it was yeah for us i think the icu development camps was like great opportunity to 
to get better technically and also to get some new exercises and because of that I think we also improved a lot. Do you remember the first time you skated indoors? No, I don't remember. <laughs> I think maybe it was maybe it was in Germany. Maybe it was Insel or Erfurt or something like that because we went also pretty often there. But uh, I think maybe maybe it was Insel. Here, let's let's show a video quick. Um this one might be interesting to you, so I want you to critique this young skater. Um, let's let's check this kid out here. Den beste rekorden av løperne som er med her, det er Tommy Poli fra Finlandsmaren med 35.70. Her er det Jin Soo Kim som åpner først. Opning time, 10.3 for him too. 11 flat for Martin Liv. And we ask for fair number three, Stefan Du Schmidt from uh, Denmark and Linus Heidegger from Austria. Make ready at start. Par number three, you're clear with start. In So Kim, 37.40. And that's a new personal best spin with five fans. Martin Eve, 30.56, 40.56. So that was, uh, near as I can tell, that was your second Junior World Cup that you ever skated in. That one was from Buen, Norway. Uh, yeah, I that remember day? that. Yeah, I remember that. It was really, really cold there. And I think I have been there even two times. There was also one time Junior World Championships. So what do you think of that young skater? He looked pretty good to me. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, if I look now, then, then it's quite slow. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, you 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 got to start somewhere. So, <laughs> well, you were you were extremely young. So I looked at that race, and you were the only C um, in that entire field. You you beat Thomas Kroll by six seconds that day. I don't know if he had an issue on the ice or something, or maybe he had just started. <laughs> so it's always good good to go back and <laughs> and take a look at that. But you know, as as I scour through your history. Um, some of the things that really caught my eye is just the amount of racing that you did at a really young age. You went to four junior world championships, um, so 13, 14, 15, and 16. And this is leading up to my first uh, uh, moment that I think is really interesting in your history. So your, your first few junior worlds, um, you know, you were young. Um, you probably were placing about where you should. But in 2016, you finished all the distances. You finished fourth overall, and you did a 655 5K, which is still the national record. So I looked, I mean, you've done, um, I don't know, a dozen 5Ks in your life, and you've only broken seven minutes once, and it was on that day. Um, how did you do that? Well, that's a good question. I also don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we had a 2015-16 season. I was training in Insel in uh, Speed Skating Academy, and uh, my coach was Wim de Nelson from Netherlands. And I had assistant coach from Spain, Dana Ruiz. So uh, we had really nice program, and it was mainly for like 500,015, but more like middle distance, like so mainly for like 1,015. But um, yeah, I just had a really good shape in uh, in March when we had the Junior Worlds in Changchung, China. And because it was all round and I had to skate 5K and this was the, I think this was my only 5K on that, on that season. So, and it was the last distance and we set the plan how I should start and actually I started a little bit too fast. And, but still I could, I could, managed the lactate and I think I did like good job on that and I remember my coach was was really really proud of me and uh yeah it was it was just a great great weekend well you should be proud of yourself I mean that's that's an incredible time you had you had skated some other 5ks and I think probably most of them or maybe all of them were outdoors so I mean the times were kind of all over the place but to to show up like that I think that's uh, that's leaving a mark on the sport there. Um, so 
you know, like I said, you spent you spent a lot of time going to the line as a young man, and I, I gotta assume that that's really helped shape your career. Um, just having all that experience, do you ever really kind of think back on that and just like, wow, I I went to the line a lot. Uh, not really, actually, but I think maybe it's a little advantage when you when you go like when you're racing a lot especially i remember my uh, first senior race in uh, in inzo 2015 yep, december 2015. was that yep yeah so i think it's good because i was then i was still then uh, junior like last year junior and uh, i really wanted to do the uh my debut on seniors because i just wanted to see where is the level and uh yeah the level was so much big so <laughs> In speed skating, it is like from juniors to seniors. It's I think it's the hardest, and I knew I won't be there as 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 good as I was in junior level because in every junior World Cup I won uh, I won medal or I was ending up on the podium. But in senior, it's totally different, and uh, I just wanted to do the starts to to know because I knew next year it's gonna be senior, so I just wanted to feel where is the level, and uh, I think this. This this is really important for like young young athlete. So uh, speaking of that <clears throat> first senior World Cup in Inzel, um, you did a couple of five hundreds and a fifteen hundred, but you got DQ'd in the thousand. Uh, do you remember that? Yeah, I think I remember why because uh, I was starting inner lane and second corner I went too wide and I crossed the line where you shouldn't cross it, so. That's why I was getting a TQ. So it was just uh, probably I just had a really bad corner. And then after yeah. Apex, I was just forcing out. And then I just couldn't keep the line. And then I let it go. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I got I got the TQ. Well, that's that's a problem that you have to deal with when you're as fast as you are. Yeah, that's true. Especially <laughs> especially in Salt Lake Calgary, it's, it's more tricky than, than in like uh, low altitude or like uh sea level track so all right so let's move on from that so I, I marked another moment in time that i thought was really interesting for you so the fall of 2016 you qualified for the world cup circuit on on the senior level and you did four world cups um that fall so china japan kazakhstan and the netherlands um the thing that i found really interesting is the first two in the Far East, your thousand times were 112.9 and 112.0. And then you went to Kazakhstan and you went 110.7. So what in the world, where did you find two seconds? Oh, that's that's a good question. It's a long time ago. <laughs> I think I wasn't good in, uh, in Asia. I remember I was having like bad, bad time there like uh, i was really tired when i arrived there and the race mm. didn't didn't went well so that was the only thing what i remember yeah so maybe it was more that you were just wiped out from jet lag and didn't travel well then then you suddenly discovered that oh i should go faster in the second lap <laughs> yeah i remember just i was really tired in in china like i think it was in harbin if i remember correctly yeah i think that's what my notes said yeah so that was just a a significant change for you but again you <clears throat> you know you just put in a lot of time and a lot of races and then in 2018 um, you made your first Olympics before you ever went to a world championship which I thought was kind of interesting <laughs> um, so you you qualified for the 1000 and the 1500 um, that was in uh, South Korea I believe so what what do you remember about that first olympics what was it uh, overwhelming to you did it just feel like another race i mean take it take us through that experience uh first of all it was really nice to qualify because uh, last time when somebody was in the olympics was 1964 in speed skating so it was uh yeah it was a cool moment for me to to go to the olympics although it was quite hard to qualify for me because I wasn't that good skater and back then uh, and first when I remember to arrive there was like it was 
totally different environment for example than like in even like junior worlds or like work Cups. so like everybody was really focused and yeah i was just uh yeah it was crazy atmosphere i really really enjoyed my time over there so in in that games um do you remember how many estonian athletes there were um total i think in total like around 30 maybe a little bit more I think around 30, 30 athletes, yeah. Gotcha, but were you were you the only speed skater? Uh, no, we had uh, two two speed skaters also from uh, from a woman, one okay. woman and me, so two skaters in total. So gotcha. Yeah, the woman skated mass start and she ended up at fourth place. So I think it's wow. pretty pretty good achievement. <laughs> That's really good. So do you do you remember the first time you went to the line there? um yeah i do i had first 1500 and i was first pair alone and i made even false start <laughs> <laughs> so nice. yeah it was a little bit uh yeah not so good that i was bearing first pair and then also alone so and i remember i wasn't really nervous i don't know why i had a had a like four star but but somehow i had it so <laughs> yeah so then um, in 2019, you went to um, a World Single Distance Championship and you did uh, the 1000. And then, as we often see in speed skating, it's, it, it can be very confusing. But just a couple weeks later, you went to World Sprints um, at a different venue and you finished 20th in, in the field in that event, which I think is very solid. Um, do you remember where that was? I think the first world single distance championships were in Inzo. And I remember I was last one in thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Although I was feeling pretty good uh, before the race, or I mean already like a few days before I was getting pretty good times and then just the race wasn't wasn't good, so <laughs> but yeah. You have to you have to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but um the you know the world sprints a couple of weeks later i mean i think a, a 20th um in that field i was looking at some of the guys and i mean that was a that field was stacked so i mean that had to give you some confidence at that point and then in 2021 uh world single distance um you did the 500 and the thousand and that thousand you finished fifth um was that the first time that you kind of felt like you really made your mark on the senior level? Yeah, definitely. Because that was uh, that was the crazy year. Actually, it was the bubble season or yeah. the Corona Corona season. So it was a little bit uh, tricky season, but for me it was actually pretty good because uh, this was the time also when I moved to the Netherlands to Team Eco, and. For me, maybe what was good that we had more time to prepare for the competition. So I remember this season, like the real season starts started in, uh, I think it was like in January or something. And I had the whole whole winter. So from like uh, from like October to January, I had just time to prepare for myself. And uh, because I had a lot of things to, to improve, especially uh, or mainly, mainly in technical parts, because we already uh made a big step in uh in physical part but i just felt i need more time to improve technically so that was really working out for me and i was in great shape in january and february yeah obviously i mean uh, uh, again you know the the list of skaters that you were competing with there was really solid and a fifth is is a great result so that takes us to the 2022 games um, where you qualified for the 500 and the 1,000. Um, and, you know, I think we all know the 2022 games was kind of a weird one. Um, what, what do you remember about that one? I kind of knew it's easier for me to qualify for uh, Beijing games than, than 2018 because I was just much better skater. And, uh, yeah, in that season, I just wanted to stay fit and do not get corona before the game so especially in january december it took really care of like not having or not getting sick so that was the main goal and uh, 
it was pretty nervous time to go there but uh, once we arrived there we made the test and when the test was negative then then the pressure was was gone because we knew when we are there and we when we don't have corona then it's then it's like perfect we're safe and i think uh, chinese people did really good job to arrange everything because i think it was quite a big big challenge for them as well to to make olympics in corona season and yeah once i was there no corona and then i was yeah the pressure was gone and then i just enjoyed my time there yeah you skated to a seventh place in the thousand um had to be a little bit strange you know when you cross the finish line and there's only a few people in the building yeah yeah that was yeah the, because the oval there is really beautiful i think in my opinion it's one of the beautiful ice rinks in the world because it's really wide it's the colors are really nice it's like and it's new so and yeah because of the corona there was no uh, public but but still yeah. still it's it's it was awesome awesome to race there so that takes us up to last season um with the single distance um which ended up being the jordan stoltz show um you finished 17th in the 500 and 9th in the thousand um and you know, to me, it's just kind of like a common theme as I look at your your history. I mean, I think you had a few injuries along the way that maybe slowed you up a little bit. But you know, to me, there's just this kind of this constant theme of you getting just a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better, um, racing a lot. And you know, I said this before we hit record, but. Um, do you feel like the the version of you that's sitting here right this minute is is the best skater that you know are, are you as good as you've ever been right now i think so yeah for sure because especially last years i improved and um, like physical and technically i still think i need some more time to to get technically also better so but I would say I'm, 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 yeah, for sure the best shape what I, what I ever had. So, let's talk a little bit about Euros. Um, you've done Euros 2017, 18, 19, 20, you know, all the way up. Um, I think maybe they were canceled in 22, um, or maybe you had an injury. Uh, I had an injury. Doing, okay. Before the Olympics, I had injury. I just. Uh, I think few days before the race, it was maybe three, four days. I had a bike sprint, uh, a little bit uphill, and uh, there was little accident. So uh, <laughs> I was pulling so hard that uh, my uh, shoe was coming off the pedal, and then the chain was coming off the chain ring, and then I hit my right leg on the chain ring, and I got like two pretty deep holes on my feet oh, good. and later on it was getting inflammated so I needed to take antibiotics for a couple of days and because of the inflammation my leg was so much so big that I couldn't skate so the only yeah. things what I could do was only like uh, cycling weights and uh, and yeah that was it so I couldn't do any any skating things mm. Well, I, you know, I think your history with, with the Euros has been pretty solid. And, and in 2024, um, just about, I guess, maybe six weeks ago, um, you got a silver in the 500 um, and a fourth in the 1,000, and you just missed the podium by a couple of tenths. Um, and we're going to take a look at some of the video from that, from that 500. But, you know, as an Estonian skater... Um, would you say that Euros is something that, that you look forward to and is meaningful to you? Yeah, of course, because it's it's always important race. For me, it's like Olympics, World Europeans, and then World Cup. So because I think European European Championships is bigger than World Cup, at least to me. So and it's it's always uh, it's always great to participate in in Europeans. Is it in uh, Heronvein a lot? Yeah, it is actually. It's many times there, <laughs> and it's perfect for me because then I need to travel only like ten minutes, and then I'm in the hotel. So it's yeah, perfect you've, for me. you've lived there for a while, so that that works out pretty good for you. Yeah. So 
Let's. So you you mentioned something before, um, and I'm gonna pander to my guest, which I like to do. I I think your skating is is excellent technically. I mean, when I watch you, I'm I'm trying to figure out what could he do better, and I just don't see anything. Uh, but it sounds like you know there's things that you would like to do. So what I did is I took that race with you and uh, Yenning Debo, um, this this. Uh, silver medal 500 from a few weeks back and and i slowed it down um and let's take a look at uh we'll take a look at uh getting off the line we'll take a look at your second corner and then your final straight away and uh, let's look at it together quick and then you can tell me where you think you can you can make some improvements So what do you what do you see there off the line? Is that an area that you think is a strength for you? Is it an area that you could do better? So uh, what we already worked already this year a little bit, but not really much, is that I can be more compact. So my upper body is a little bit too too high at the, at the like first first part. So I think I can I can be more more compact. So more more arrow. That means yeah. But it's it's a lot of work. It's it's not just coming like. I think I maybe just need like one summer to work on that. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this second corner. Um, I, I always enjoy watching you in a corner. <laughs> I mean, that guy is compact. There's a lot of power. I don't see any wasted motion at all. Um, um, actually, this corner was one of my best of my life, probably, because I had a really, really good uh, entry. I went like really, I would say quite deep, like maybe more deeper than normally I do. And then from the first step, I had like, uh, what normally my problem is, I'm getting too early to the line and then the force just pulling you out. But on that race, I kept it like perfect line, I would say. And then after Apex, I had like not so many like force. So I well, there was force, but not so much. So I could really build out, and uh, that's why I think it was also like one of my best 500s in uh, in my career. So, but but yeah, normally, especially in like um, fast tracks like Salt Lake and Calgary, and then I have problems like after the apex because the force is so much and then it's like pulling me out and I, I cannot really accelerate out and I think I can be also more like compact especially my upper body is a little bit open so I, I think I just still need like more time to work on that gotcha well and let's watch you bring it home here off that awesome exit Perfect. Thirty-four seventy-eight at sea level. That's uh, that's a pretty good time. Yeah, I think so too. Like, uh, especially I had my fastest one hundred ever, and uh, the lap was also pretty good. And on that day, it was enough to end it up on the on the second place. So I think it's it's good. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was a great skate, and I mean, in that case, you know, Yenning had a really really good race as well. Um, how much do you pay attention to your pair when you're in a 500? Um, not really, actually. I'm just uh, I'm just looking if I can use draft, especially in a thousand meters. So then I'm really looking who is like bearing me, and uh, then I'm just uh, yeah, because I know almost all the skaters who are skating in A group, so I know how fast they start and if I can use them or not. So that's that's what I'm doing, but it's just. Uh, really really like uh small research what i do yeah well we were going to try to look at your 1000 from the 2022 games but youtube just wouldn't allow me you got such a great draft on on that last straight away or the last back stretch but uh we're not going to be able to look at that one together unfortunately you mentioned this before, um, but in 2020 um, you were able to move over to team eco um, which is a great team. Uh, there's some great skaters. Uh, I, I was reading quite a bit on the website about all of the resources that you have. But prior to joining that team, um, 
you know, if we look back at like, say the 2018 Olympics, um, who was out on the ice coaching you? Uh, 2018, I was training with uh, Team Austria, so mainly for like uh, mass start, 1500 meter and 5k guys. But on, on the Olympics, there was only one coach and it was the Saskia Alusalu, the other girl who qualified for uh, Olympics. Uh, so her coach was uh, just coaching me in the Olympics or just showing the laps. So. Gotcha. So how did you make your way on to Team Eco? Did they call you? Uh, actually, no, it all started in 2020 in January. I was in Insel. I was preparing for World Cup in Calgary. And I was staying in the in the hotel where I stayed uh, during my uh, speed skating academy at that time. But because after my uh, junior years, last year, junior, so 2016, the speed skating academy closed. And after that, and nowadays also it's a hotel. So I stayed there in the hotel and the owner is from the Netherlands and he knows my coach, Ervin Denova right now. And uh, the guy was asking me in the hotel, hey, how are you doing? And am I happy in the team? I said, not really. And then uh, then it was just like uh, texting to Erwin, hey, I have one guy here and uh, he's looking for, for a team or something. So and then I moved to Calgary for a World Cup. I think it was number, World Cup number five. It was 2020. And Erwin was also there, and then he already knew that I'm also coming, and then we just arranged time to sit down and talk, and then we had like first talks, and it was pretty positive. And he was just asking a lot of questions, why I want to move, and a lot of, lot of things about this, and then I think he collected all the info, and then later on we had uh, more talks, and then it was getting more serious, and then... Estonian Skating Federation was getting involved and I think it was 1st of May we signed a two years contract. Let's take a look at some of the skaters on this team. So that's there's some pretty good skaters on that screen. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting. It's a nice mix of some middle distance people and you got some sprinters and you got some long distance. And this is only maybe half the team. Uh, but again, when I was reading on the website, what I thought was really interesting is just the number of resources you have available to you. Um, you guys are doing regular check-ins. You've got sports psychologists. You've got all the physical stuff. You're doing testing. Um, there's a lot of resources there. Do you think that helps you? Yeah, definitely. Then, like in speed skating, you need it, or in, in like every every sport when you're in highest level, you you need that. So. I think I think it's just like helping us. So, who are some of the other sprinters on that team? Uh, so mainly, I'm training with uh, Sebastian. He was also participating this season in the World Cups, and then Kai Sesters, Kai Avos, and Arman Pro. So uh, they are mainly my my teammates. Gotcha. So. Let's bring that image back up again. So in the upper right corner there, uh, Sebas. So he's a yeah. Dutch guy, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I follow the sport somewhat, but I, I saw him in the first World Cup and I, I did not recognize him. So he just came out of nowhere and started going fast. Um, he got a lot of talent, so he's like really, he's like really pure sprinter. So, and I think he improved quite a lot this summer. So he was getting like more stronger, and because he's getting older also, so he's getting, he's getting know more how how to skate fast. And uh, he had a really good uh, race in October when the touches have the World Cup qualification tournament. So he skated really good there. I think he was, I'm not sure where he was. For for, for sure, he was in top three. So yeah. And then he got the spot in in the World World Cup team, and he did. He was starting in A group in Obihiro, Japan, but unfortunately he crashed on the last last corner. So the next 500 he fell back to B group, and and yeah, that was just just a not a not a good race to start, you know. Yeah. So you've been with this team since 2020, so you've gone through 
three summer cycles with with the team and you'll be heading to another one here in a few months um can you tell us a little bit about what the summer training looks like with this group are are you doing the same things each summer or are you kind of mixing it up um to take us through that a little bit um it's it's not every time the same uh but in general it's pretty much the same so we are doing a lot of a uh, lot of biking and at the same time inlining weights uh like dry land training imitations light boards stuff like this but mainly it's a lot of like hours on the bike what is the stuff that you like and what is the stuff you don't like about summer training mm, i think i like uh like heavy intervals we have almost like every every week at least one like heavy interval and it's normally on uh, on Friday, and there you can really kill yourself. And I think I like this the most. Uh, maybe what I don't like as much as the interval training is maybe weight training, because in the summer we do quite heavy program, and then I'm getting really stiff afterwards, and it's it's not good feeling after that. So you're like really really tired and stiff, and you still need to need to go on. So maybe maybe I don't like that that part. Yeah, but you got, you know, all those resources around you. You can just go see the physio and try to figure out how to get yourself moving again. Yeah, that's that's the benefit. <laughs> so you mentioned inlining. You've you've done some inline marathons, right? Yeah, back in the days uh, when I was training, training still in uh, in Estonia. Are you a good inliner? Uh, I think I'm pretty decent. Not as as good as in uh, in the world, but but in Estonia, I think I'm I'm pretty good because the level is not not so high. Gotcha. So let's let's jump into modern day here now. Um, so we've got Calgary coming up. You're in Calgary now, and you're going to skate five hundred thousand. Um, and then a few weeks later, it's off to Germany for World Sprints. Um, do you have any specific goals for these events? Are you just wanting to skate well and see what happens? Or do, do you have anything specifically in mind that's going to tell you whether you had a successful time or not? Uh, yeah, always have. So for me, I just want to have like technically good race. So lately it has been pretty good. So I just want to continue and maybe do some things even better but for me the main focus is like just having technically good good race and if i achieve this this is already bonus for me and uh yeah you will never know how the others are skating so but yeah this this year the goal is to end up top three and this is like the secondary goal but the main goal is just to have technically technically good good race so for the 500 um, in the single distance coming up here in Calgary, will there be two 500s or is there just one? Uh, just one. So it's starting on on Friday. This is my first race and then Saturday is the 1,000 meter. Okay. So for the 500, um, can I make a guess and say you would rather be in the outer? I would, I would like to start inner. <laughs> really? Yeah, because then uh, then I have uh, then it's easier for me to start start the first corner to get more speed, and then the second uh, second outer corner is easier to handle than the inner inner corner. Yeah, that's true at at altitude, but I don't know. I guess I I kind of always feel like it's it's nice to have coming off the first corner having somebody land right in your living room there that you can chase, but. You know, it also depends on your opener. So, like, what's what's a really good five hundred opener for you? I think it's it's nice to have somebody who is like similar to me or a bit faster. So, because when somebody's a little bit faster, then you also like need to need to push yourself. Yeah. So, I think it's either similar or like a little bit faster. That's gotcha. the idea. So, but I think, you know, right now, um, you're a solid 500 guy, but I think your thousand is really the, that's where you make your money. So is there anything about a thousand race, um, in terms of your pair or do you prefer inner versus outer? Um, it's, it's like 50, 50, 
I I like to start inner because then then you have like um, I think inner if you start inner it's a little bit easier to to bring the speed especially in the first corner but the tricky part will be the second corner and I think the most advantage will be the last crossing straight because then if you can use then you can use your opponent a little bit to use the draft yeah but um, to start outer lane it's it's also good that you can push like full gas the second corner and then you can chase chase the um, opponent on the crossing straight and then you just go with the with the full speed to the inner corner and just try to hammer it yeah and then and then just go all out so try not to end up in the pads on the exit exactly yeah <laughs> By the time we get to 2026, I think you're going to be 30 years old or you're going to turn 30 somewhere around there. Um, I'm sure you want to go to 26 and I'm sure you want to win a medal in Italy. Um, have you thought about life after skating? Is, is that about the time that you think you might be done or are you not thinking about being done? Right now, I'm not thinking about being being done so i'm just focusing on season by season and yeah right now the main goal is is olympics 26 and i just uh yeah i'm just gonna see how how this will go and uh yeah because i think then it's another four years still olympics and i will just i will just see how, how next olympics is going to be and uh then i will make make the de- decision so you've you've skated some pretty good 1500s in your career, but you haven't really skated many lately. Um, I, I I assume you're done with 1500s. Um, I think by racing in World Cups, maybe yes. But as I'm using using a training for thousand, I think I will still will do some, but um, but maybe not this season for sure. But uh, maybe maybe in like in next in next season i'm gonna do a few to just to just get to just get better in uh, in thousand meter because i think sometimes it's good to race 15 to use the because 15 is really hard distance and i think it's for me it's like good training for thousand so when when i watch you um you know on a world cup or anything currently is one of the eco coaches always on the back stretch yes always that's helpful huh yeah so normally for example here in calgary we have two coaches because we have uh three skaters so me joy berner from the netherlands and then part swings from belgium and then we need just uh, two coaches because otherwise two or like to have one coach it's it's not enough yeah. And normally when we are, it depends just where we are and how many skaters we are, but normally we always have like two coaches with us. Well, it, you, you mentioned Joy. I mean, she's had a phenomenal season. Um, Bard is always great. Um, it's, it, I got to assume that the feeling around Team Eco right now is pretty positive. I would say definitely yes, because I think we are doing a great job, especially this year we... We did better than ever because we had quite a lot of skaters in World Cup. Like I think more more than ever, and we are a pretty young group. And yeah, I think we're just doing a good job. You guys got great looking skin suits too. I I think your team skins are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> well, and speaking of skin suits, I I have to tell the world that um, I I still am just blown away by the fact that you uh you brought me an estonia skin suit and it's waiting for me in salt lake which is probably the coolest thing anybody's ever done for me so you got a you got a fan for life now with me (laughs) (laughs) nice yeah exactly so i'll i'll be heading over there in uh and first week of march yeah so i should probably start booking flights and finding a place to stay so we're heading out for the finale I think that's the same weekend that you guys are actually in Inzel, so it'll be fun watching uh, watching Worlds after we're done skating. Well, that's what I had for you today. Um, I I think you're still on an ascent, which is pretty cool. It's you know 
<clears throat> sometimes I talk with people and their careers are all over the place, but you're, you know, aside from a couple injuries, you just seem to be getting a little bit better and getting a little bit better. So who knows how far you're going to go. Yeah, that's the, that's our goal also to, to develop as a skater. So to get better for me, the main, main part is like technically, because I think we already reached pretty much maximum of physical of course of course we can have maybe a few percentages percentages to get it higher but i think the most most what i can get the time off is is uh getting better by uh, technically yeah just get that upper body down that's all you gotta do <laughs> yes it's really easy <laughs> <laughs> it sounds easy but to do that it's 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 yeah. it's hard Yes, we, we, I think we both know this sport is, uh, is really challenging. But, well, that's Martin Leave all the way from Calgary. This is way too much fun. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I wish you the very best in Calgary and Inzel and look forward to seeing you in person sometime, maybe when uh, World Cup comes to Milwaukee in a couple of years. Yeah, why not? Thank you very much. All right, brother. Great session. We're out of here.